Here we go folks, welcome back. It's time for another post-match pint. We're on the roof at Malone's Bar. We've just watched Celtic beat St Johnson 1-0 to secure passes into the Scottish Cup semi-final where we'll face Aberdeen. Joined by Declan and Scott. Uh, post-match pint. Scott, is that some tears you've got there? It is tears. What kind of tears are they again? Salty ones. Salty, lots of salty <laughs> Very nourishing. <laughs> um, boys, today, a tough game. Tough conditions. Uh, but we got there in the end. We did. Uh, these cup games can be really difficult. Um, as seen today, but this team cup competitions just seems to keep going and getting results, and um, all credit to them today because it was it didn't look a nice pitch to play on. No, it was it was tough, Scott. It was horrible conditions. Tough game to watch as well. I mean, scrappy, very scrappy, and I think probably a little bit a sluggishness for Thursday night. Um, players need to pick themselves up. Even the crowd as well need to pick themselves up Thursday night. Big disappointment. Um, so I thought there was. S uh, struggles early on due Aye. to that. It's always going to be a wee bit of a hangover, um, but we need to get past it because we're going to go to Europe at some point. Um, the bottom line was, I mean, the park. I don't want that to become the main talking point because they played on the same part that we played on. Mm. But I don't think I've seen a park that bad since I was, I, mean, I was maybe playing on a park <laughs> uh, as bad as that. So, bottom line is, we dug out the result and see to analyse that game. I don't know if I can avoid all the kind of standard cliches right? uh, it's that game was like a cliche, cliche game you know like the wind's all that matters all that shit we, <laughs> dug, it all can, we dug it out uh, that's all I can think about saying so I'm going to try and avoid that because we're better than that uh, we're better than that um, I, I think that the only joy we were really getting in the game Paul was Forrest on the right hand side and it was on few occasions right he's usually brilliant He'd, when he beats his man and when he gets to the byline and he, was, he cut it back a couple of times or won a corner a couple of times that was really the only joy we were getting in terms of making it a, a substantial attack mm -hmm. everything else was a hopeless ball into the box or playing the ball up to Edward and it wasn't sticking to him mm. um, wasn't a nice game to watch in the slightest but we got through it so that's that says something that's all that matters uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Declan I think Edward's struggling now a wee bit of sticky patch just in it. At times today, games. you know, the head was dropping down a wee bit and he just phrased didn't look interested, but to me that's what it was. But uh, you saw the difference when Griffiths went off mm. and he paired him and Christie just didn't seem to work at all, you know, wee flicks and stuff just weren't coming off. He took his penalty lovely on Thursday night. Yeah. But he didn't get a lot of service and I think if the big man doesn't get a lot of service he'll not come looking a mm. lot. So um there was a few wee chances, you know, he opened up the defence but he that one where he flicked it. Aye, the one he back heel aye, flicked it. It was a wee uh, flight and then it was a one he skied. Yeah. Uh, which was a good chance in the game. But listen, big players sometimes have off days, uh, and I'm sure they'll hopefully pick his cell back up for another big mm. game on Wednesday night. Aye. Scott, there's no getting away for the pitch, you've touched on it already, but I thought in the first half, if anything, I think Foster had more saves to make than, than Xander Clark and mm. if I remember right, I think he made three three decent ones. Aye, I don't think any of them were in serious doubt um, it's one of the mill saves that you expect them to make but Aye. nonetheless they were good chances for St Johnson I don't think mm. how good the shot was determines how dangerous the chance was Aye, and the chances especially the one where um, who's gave it away uh, was it was it Christy who had gave it away Aye, in the middle of the park in the middle of the park and he, the guy's running through I don't know who it was running through in a serious amount of space he had Aye. a lot of options on he ends up taking a shot mm -hmm. And um, he's not put it in the top bag, so so Fraser Forster saved it. But those are the kind of chances that we weren't even really making. Aye, that's I, what I'm what saying. What I aye. said at the start of the game was, with that kind of park, like my advice would be, we're not going to be getting in behind and getting chances three, four yards out for goal and getting tap-ins because the park doesn't isn't conducive to that type of play. Mm -hmm. I thought let's just get to you know 18 yards out, 20 yards out, get a bit of space and try and put shots on goal mm -hmm. because you want the ball to bounce before the goalkeeper can see the dugout was just mud right. so the goalkeeper is really going to struggle number one we grip under his feet and number two we're judging the bounce yeah. so that would be the game plan but we didn't really go down that route and at the end of the day I'm not the manager but <laughs> if I was that's what I would be advising I know we, we still tried to play but it was it was really difficult I thought second half though Declan we came out a much better tempo I think we created more chances in the first 10 minutes of the second half we did the whole first half um, and you could see a real impetus about us that did fade again and then St Johnson had spells and uh, I'd say the last 20 minutes of the game it, it toed and throwed but m much better second half Oh definitely you know we, uh, we went forward well the substitutes probably did impact the game you know Drogic just came on and you know what he can do with his feet 
and he opened up the, the Saints defence a bit but they did look as if they had some intense Celtic about them from the first half it was very laggy and it was just kind of lacklustre but second half we came out all guns blazing and um, it just seems to keep going you know they don't like losing mm. games or, or drawing games domestically so you know th this team is cup competitions is absolutely phenomenal and you know it was a big big win today I think ah, it was huge it was absolutely huge Scott um, one of the things you get with these type of games is challenges flying in on a surface like that um, and there was a few of them today a few questionable refereeing decisions for Bobby Madden as standard some shocking decisions <laughs> Not just the small ones, like was that our corner or was that, do you know what I mean, Aye. our throw in. It was some really heavily debatable decisions. See, one of the worst ones for me, right, and you kind of debated whether mm. I should have been as strong on this one, but I thought it was a stonewall red card um, on the right wing. James Forrest, maybe about, what, 70 minutes, 75 minutes, and he's running through and goal at pace, and the defenders took him right out of the game. I thought that's Flies a guaranteed in. red card. Is this the one for they get the goal from? Um, I think it might have been. Aye, it is. Aye, so is. the one we get the goal from? 82-83. I thought it'd be right in front of me. And the way James, he goes right up in the air. Aye. Even, not just Madden, his line's been standing two yards. Aye. And there was no intent to play the ball there. No. He just absolutely Aye. smashed them. And it looked really, really bad. And I, I just don't know how... He, he never reached into his pocket. He Paul thinks that it was the defender's arm that caught I him. Thought, I never uh, saw that. I thought he caught him with his arm because he flew in. It's, he flew in at ridiculous speed. He did. I, yeah. I think he caught him with his feet as well, but he's but out of control. Oh, he, absolutely no out of control. And I think his like his dragging arm, his dragging arm. Even even cuts his James in the way through. And even so injury wise, a wonderful tackle. That, McGregor seemed to get a right bang off that mm. clearance for Beaton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know whether it was his elbow or his wrist, but. Aye. And that, that was right in the middle of St. Johnson. St. Johnson were having a spell. Uh -huh, yeah. They had corner after corner. Uh, there was a cutback for Stevie May. They got blocked. They, they were piling on the pressure for that wee they five minute spell, and, and uh, McGregor was a man down basically because Beaton had blasted the ball. Aye, well, we bit a lot they could have got a goal today, and Julian had a really bad tackle on him as well. Remember when uh, Forster got booked? Aye, that, that was a shocker, that was, yeah, by the way. Terrible tackle. And uh, Forster got booked. There, there was a. There was one I thought maybe St Johnston actually in the penalty area. It's Julian goes over, and it's a shoulder challenge for where I was sitting. Is the boy Tanzer at left I back? I think so, yeah. and um, I was mm. quite surprised. Aye. Favorite Ring referee might never on. pointed to the well, aye, to the spot just, because um, I was just waiting for a challenge. <laughs> and Bobby to blow the whistle, but fortunately not. And um, we get the bit of luck from his foul that he gives in Forest when the guy nearly killed him. So aye, and, and Ryan Christie swings a ball in Scott, and in keeping with the game, it was one of the goals. That, listen, we get a bit of luck with Ryan Christie puts it in an area. It's one of the ones where if nobody gets a touch on it, it's going in. It's actually mm -hmm. a great ball. It's a great ball it's because ball. if Julian gets a touch on it, it's a goal. Um, a few a few boys outside the stadium thought that Julian did get a touch, but they've given it to Christie. I was right behind Christie when he took it, and it looked like it went straight in. Christie was the one that celebrated it as well. Um, but a scrappy goal to sum up a scrappy mm -hmm. game. In terms of set pieces, I think we've really benefited from having Lee Griffiths back again. His, yep. his dead balls are absolutely superb. Ryan Christie was on dead balls before Lee Griffiths came back and Christie's obviously took this free kick and, and it's been brilliant. That's what mm -hmm. we're going to see. Obviously, he's obviously improving. Um, no, deadly ball in and again, the dugout area has maybe kind of helped uh, make Xander Clark a wee bit confused as to how the bounce is going to go in and slightly fluky goal scrappy goal but you'll take whatever you can get at these kind of stadiums absolutely and in games like that you will Declan we've got seven games I think mm. we need seven wins to, to decide to lead math the league mathematically two games two cup games left um, we are really in with a chance with a quadruple treble and that is remarkable because it's not something after a treble treble that nobody thought would ever happen nobody's really spoke this season about a quadruple treble no but here we are Coming into March, and it is a real possibility. Oh, it certainly is. Um, won't count our chickens too early because obviously Aye. we know what cup football's like. Aberdeen will pose a tough threat uh, at Hamden. Mm -hmm. We obviously need to get the league over the line. Um, but yeah, we've got a real great chance of that. And that again is the core of a team that, you know, just seem to have so much drive and determination to win these trophies. Mm. And uh, for what Neil's did since coming in, I don't think anybody would have. Imagined being so far in front at this point in March, especially after our game at the end of December, having won the League Cup in a very tough final, yeah. um, which is obviously still talked about as teams think they should have won it but mm. didn't win it, and uh, we're in a great position to go and do a quadruple treble, which 
is unprecedented and probably I don't think any other team will do it again because it's it's just ridiculous you know uh, it's, uh, for that consistency it's crazy uh, it's absolutely crazy I think we're going to be chorus of bye bye Rangers food in the stair there so um, serenading us um, Scott do well. you know the thing I love about it I've got a few. I follow a few people on Twitter who support other teams in Scotland. Uh, I don't mean Rangers here. I mean M- MD. I hope just not. A, a few other Premiership there, teams, right? Um, and they just hate that we keep winning. And yeah. listen for a, for a neutral or from somebody who doesn't support Celtic. Obviously, you hate it. It's like maybe us looking at the the German league or the, the French league and saying, "Oh, it's no competition." Yeah. PSG keep mm-hmm. winning. Bayern Munich keep winning. But I tell you, it's brilliant that we just keep winning. Aye. Is there a better time to be a Celtic fan? That's debatable. I don't think so. That's I think debatable. For, well, uh, for an older generation, and, and, and recent generation, I think for an older think so. generation in sixties and seventies was their time. But yeah, um, sure. I think we've been very, very lucky. Not to send the da, but you know what this teams did and what we've achieved. And if we do the the holy grail, you know everybody's going to be absolutely loving it. So um, you know, and I think a lot of Scottish teams have reflected that in the way they've treated us. You know, mm-hmm. teams cut the allocations for stadiums, especially Aberdeen. Yeah. You go up there and it's just a, the hate spilling out them because you know they've not won anything in so long. What they usually allocation. meet us in the final as exactly, well. Exactly, and they always get beat. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I think a lot of teams are starting to just not just their fans, but club wise are taking the bite. <laughs> but you know what? Who cares? Listen, just getting fed up with Celtic one. Ah, Can I say bad. something, right, Paul? I've not been on the channel for a while, right? Mm-hmm. So I've been bottling up. Welcome back. Hey. Welcome back. Thanks a lot. I've been bottling up. Uh, a lot of things I've been wanting to say, right? Aye. So you, you're touching on how good it's been to be a Celtic fan, that we're relentless and we're winning everything, right? Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is, after Thursday night, that wasn't the sentiment that was coming out of a lot of Celtic fans, Aye. right? And the point I want to make is, and I know people on the channel been, or people in the comments will call me a happy clapper and all that, right? I'm more than happy to lay in a couple of digs when things aren't going right or somebody doesn't play well. Aye. That's part and parcel of football, right? Um, I just feel that there's certain people in the team who people are much quicker to um, write on. off or jump on mm-hmm. for some for I, I don't know why there really is, there is. I don't really know what it is it used to be James Forrest right he doesn't really get there's it as bad favorites. now aye people have favourites right it's a scapegoat every time aye, there's I would a, agree there's with that yeah. it used to be a scapegoat aye. the point I want to make isn't oh stop complaining right that's again that's probably a cliche I, the point I'm trying to make is what do we have to benefit, right, mm. from after getting put out of Europe? We we're going to get put out of Europe at some point. We had a great run, right? I we had a great it run. No. It wasn't a good result, right? But it wasn't It wasn't a good result. It was mm. a game, a second half almost, that, that dictated that we went out of Europe. And Aye. it's no good enough. And let's c- we complain about it and we say what's went wrong Aye. and maybe you should have changed the formation. But see, actually questioning whether the manager's good enough based on that is ridiculous, right? And the point I want to make is, if that's what you believe, I almost feel that there's a group of people, a minority of the sport, who decide that, have decided at the start of the season that Neil Lennon is not the man, and then when it all starts to look rosy, they say, oh, he's proved me wrong, and then a week later, no, no, he's not the man again, and I feel like, if that's what you believe, like, you're welcome to your opinion, but what if, what is it to benefit from splitting the fans of people who support Neil Lennon, no matter whether we're in Europe or out of Europe, and the people who always want to say, see, I told you, I told you, I told you. Like, what is it the benefit Aye, between us arguing amongst uh, each other? It's not it's no about what's to benefit from it. The people are, and this is going to be a theme, it's been a theme, it's going to be a theme, that the domestic dominance is balanced at the other side by stagnation in European football. It's failure. We can't get by the last 32 yeah. Europa League. We've been third in the Champions League group stage last 32 we've been second in a Europa League group in the last 32 and now we've won a Europa League group in the last 32 we can't get by the last 32 mm-hmm. far, far worse teams than us are in the last 16 Europa League that's a problem that's a problem because and you say it's one game it's the same as the Cluj game yeah yeah. and if you add in the Rangers game it's three times at home in big games that we've had to win this season that we've failed pretty miserably in and I the team has been fantastically consistent domestically but these you can't write that off no I'm not writing it off this is me crediting it we have been fantastic and consistent domestically and we've beat everybody who we should be beating mm. because we are the biggest club in the country with more money than anybody else could imagine but we keep having that dominance pierced and we keep having reset points in Europe where we find out where we're actually at and the club is regressing in the European football yeah. context and that's 
that's because of a number of things and there's never going to be any getting away for that and okay people will point at the manager people can point at players and make scapegoats some people can point at the board the reality is everybody has to take a responsibility for where this club is at in European terms because it's not really good enough Do you think we've regressed since last year in Europe? We've not we never qualified we've stagnated between last year and this year Champions League and um, I, my point in that would be last the, the, co the Copenhagen game I know it was a second half that was bad but um, it was a failure in two games because the first half over there, we probably should have killed the game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I would point back to is January signings. Everybody was crying out for that centre half and it never came. And our transfer dealings in January were maybe something to point to how ambitious we were in mm -hmm. European football because it was positions that and players that you would maybe not fancy at that stage. You know, Taylor was fired in for his first European game. Um, Same with Frimpong over there, other players, just, you just know at that level, just not got it. Mm. And signing wise in January, I think we said, we're not really bothered about going Aye. further here, and I don't really know what the plan That's is with European football because Copenhagen did their business well on Thursday night, but the reality is they're a side who are in our par or below our par mm. that are fundamentally dealt with us over two legs, had a really good second half against us, probably should have won the game over there Aye. and keep the Celtic Park bounced in three individual errors mm -hmm. and punished us and mm -hmm. that's why we're you know domestic dominance is fantastic and I would never criticise that I like Neil Lennon as a manager I think he's done a great job since coming in but ambition wise in Europe just seems to be group stage mm -hmm. football which I don't we, we've had understand. transfer window after transfer window after transfer window where you look at it at the end of the month and you think it's no sure that's good enough and this is the European football playing out those transfer windows because we're not improving as much as we should be. We're still we've still got enough to, to get by and dominate domestically, but that gap to making strides in Europe, we're not doing enough. We're not doing enough. I, everybody knew in January that Klamala and Soro weren't enough to come in and improve the first team. Mm. They're, well, they're nowhere to be back, seen. They're even, nowhere to be seen. Even saw it squeezed in first because the only midfield three could play realistically was Brown, McGregor, Drogic. Um, because Christine of and Sam out. Aye. And a, an injury. So, you buy a midfielder in January for a few million quid, mm -hmm. not featured at all, but been absolutely nowhere. Th there's no plan for him to make you an know, impact for 12 or 18 where, months. Where is he going to come? And it's even the same today. We see Bio come on. I see the guy we signed for a couple of million quid as well, who skipped the queue in front of Klamala. I mean, is this just going to be wait and see with these guys? Or, Listen, you know? we could be here to Tuesday we talking about this. Um, the main thing for today is we're in another semi-final. Um, the, the debate about where we're going in Europe versus domestic dominance is going to continue. Of course it will. Um, and it's a, an important debate that we should be having as fans, you know. It is. It everybody should is. be have a strong opinion on it. I think everybody's delighted with what we do domestically, but would like to see us, you know, hold do our hands up when we, when we fail to a, a, a team that you deserve to get beat by. But when it's sides that maybe just don't, you know, you fancy a sell against and that's... When it comes down to you're disappointed and you Aye. know we can still be disappointed Aye. but um, today was good and we'll just move on. It was. Another semi-final, we're facing Aberdeen at Hamden, um, 34 cup wins in a row, remarkable consistency, we just keep on winning domestically and that is so so impressive. That will do us for the post-match bank today, like the video, comment your own thoughts below, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you during the week for the build-up to Livingston, thank you.